Good evening. Counting is well underway in the referendum for a North East Regional Assembly. After months of campaigning, we should find out later tonight if the region has voted yes or no. Well, live now to our political editor, Richard Moss, who's at Sunderland now for the count. Richard, uh, do we know yet which way the vote's likely to go? Well, they have only really just started counting here at the Crow Tree Leisure Centre. I think it's fair to say that the no camp are probably more confident than the yes, but we really don't know. The last poll in this was three weeks old, so there really is no telling which way people have actually voted. One thing I would say, though, is that the people in the North East are not going to just deliver a verdict here. They're going to deliver a verdict, really, that will affect Cumbria and North Yorkshire. Because if there's a yes vote here, then the devolution bandwagon rolls on to the North West and Yorkshire. If there's a no vote, it's probably over for a generation. And have we got a final figure on the turnout? The turnout is pretty healthy. We covered yesterday how it had leapt up, and it's leapt up again. The last estimate was around 45%. We think that at four, it could have raised to 47% by the end because people have been handing votes in all day at collection centres, council offices around the region right up till 10 o'clock. So the turnout is pretty healthy and that's something that's encouraging the Yes campaign. Richard. Richard Moss, thanks so much indeed. And there'll be a special programme on BBC One in the North East tonight as soon as the result. We'll be returning to our film, Speak Like a Child, later. But now on BBC One, we're joining Richard Moss live in Sunderland, where a result is imminent in the referendum for a North East Regional Assembly. I, Jed Fitzgerald, Chief Counting Officer for the North East Region, hereby give notice that the turnout is 47.71% and that the total number of ballot papers counted at the Regional Assembly referendum was as follows. Anik. Yes, 2,771. No, 11,666. Berwick upon Tweed. Yes, 2,250. No, 8,597. Blythe Valley, 7,523. And 21,178. Castle Morpeth, 4,776. And 16,952. Chester the Street, 5,487 and 15,610. Darlington, 4,784 and 32,282. Derwent side, yes, 9,718, no, 22,888. Durham, 9,791, 24,106. Easington, 8,065 and 21,520. Gateshead, 17,011, 52,459. Hartlepool, 4,887 and 24,240. Middlesbrough, 7,977 and 33,000. 43. Newcastle upon Tyne, yes, 19,984. No, 61,477. North Tyneside, 15,203 and 55,121. Redcar in Cleveland, 8,493 and 43,250. Sedgefield, 9,040 and 23,583. South Townside, 11,329 and 41,029. Stockton on Tees, 11,050 and 52,040. Sunderland, yes, 17,927, no, 71,893. Teesdale, 2,020 and 8,972. Tyndale, 5,146 and 20,975. Wandsbeck, 5,947 and 15,503. Weir Valley, 6,131, 17,635. 
and I certify that the total number of votes cast for the question, should there be an elected assembly for the North East region, is yes, 197,310, and no, 696,519. And that the region has voted no to an elected assembly for the North East. Thank you. Could I please ask uh, John Elliott from the No campaign and John Tomney from the Yes campaign to join me on the stage? Well, I'd like to thank um, the team down here, from our campaign director to the Elephant Keeper. Well done. We're a small team. At times we're embattled, but we fought on. Well done. But more important, I'd like to thank the people of the North East. I'm proud to be a North Eastern man today. We've sent a message, a very simple message, to the government. And politicians must take notice of this. It's a very clear message, and they've got to act on that. They've got to raise their game. Thank you. I'd like to uh, thank the returning officer and his staff for the commendable way they've conducted this, uh, this count. I'd like to thank the police and those who've ensured everyone's safety tonight. I'd like to thank the campaign team at Yes for the North East who fought hard and honourably for the prize of a North East Assembly. It's been a privilege to work with the team who I know are bitterly disappointed by this outcome. We set out to create a positive campaign which celebrated the North East and set out the advantages of an Assembly which would give the region the strong and unified voice it needs. I'd like to say a word tonight about the Deputy Prime Minister, John Prescott. He believed in the idea of giving the North East a strong voice and advocated it with integrity and passion. He gave the people of the North East a choice about how it is governed, which in the past few others have done, and we should respect that. The people of the North East, the people of the North East have rejected the offer of an elected regional assembly, and we accept that verdict. Those of us who favoured an elected regional assembly were unable to get across to the people of the region the advantages we felt it could bring to them. But the result tonight is not just about a North East regional assembly. It reflects something bigger. That is a growing breakdown in the belief that political institutions can affect people's lives for the better. This should concern us all in this room. It should concern all political parties uh, in this room uh, tonight. Political institutions remain important, however. While many people in the North East may feel they are more prosperous than ever, the North-South divide remains a fact of economic life in England. Successive governments have failed to resolve it. It needs to be addressed. We need to find solutions to the problems that confront us, solutions that unlock the potential of the region. We need mechanisms for voicing the concerns and interests of the North East if the region is to play its full part in the life of the United Kingdom. Above all, we need to find an expression for the pride that people feel in the region. We need a means to promote our identity in positive ways. The people of the North East want a greater say over their own lives, so the issues that have been addressed in this campaign will not disappear. The challenges before us are profound. Thank you very much. Well, there's the result. A very decisive no. Three to one against an assembly. The North East has rejected a regional assembly. Quite clearly, quite decisively, they sent a clear message. John Prescott's dream of devolution in the English regions is over tonight, I suspect. With me now, one person who supported it, Ray Mallon, Mayor of Middlesbrough, Graham Robb, from the No campaign as well. Ray Mallon, you were a fairly latecomer to this debate, but you did embrace this vision of a regional assembly. How does it make you feel to see it's been so overwhelmingly rejected by the people of the North East? In my view, I think it's absolutely clear the public of the North East are not just saying no to a regional assembly, they're saying something else to the government. Not one council area has actually agreed to a regional assembly, 23 have said no impactfully. So the way that I see it is this, we've got to find new mechanisms so that we bring the North East of England together. I want to see a unified North East of England so that it pushes where it's just to all of England. 
Graham Rock. I mean, university. So a very big victory. Uh, I mean, your message us, must have struck a chord with people. It's a tremendous victory. We ran to, to a very tight, very small much. campaign, and it worked because it was in tune with the instincts of the people. Mm. People don't believe that the solution to their problems is more government, another layer of regional bureaucracy. This was a decisive no, and it tells the politicians of all parties and those of none that they have to raise their game. People of the North East are quite clear. They're not getting the results they deserve and expect, and the politicians have to go back and think again. Ray I Mallon, agree with that. Well, would it have helped if the Assembly was offered more powers? Would that have been easier to sell? No, all the powers were there. They were within the, actually within the Crangos, they were within Government North East. All the powers are there. What the Regional Assembly was there to do was to actually coordinate everything so that we got more efficiency, more effectiveness, more value for money. But the bottom line is, whichever way you look at this, this is a strong message to the government that the public of the North East of England, I would think the rest of the country, they are not happy with politicians. So the government should take this on board, and I'm sure that they will. And, and it's good to hear Ray taking this on board, because Ray lent the Yes campaign his credibility. Absolutely. Now he's going to work to get his credibility back, and it's nice to hear what you've said, Ray, yeah, because no. No, you are a credible no, no. politician, and, and I think that the fact that already one of the leading Yes campaigners is starting to acknowledge what well, we've been saying. Well, let's, let's deal with another issue, though, Graham, Rob, because basically... The people of North East have rejected one solution to their problems, they the have. Regional Assembly. But where does this leave us? Because it leaves us with a status quo that even you've acknowledged has caused problems for the North East, left it economically behind. I, I do acknowledge that, and we've heard all of the litany of terrible problems that we've got in the North East openly uh, discussed by the, the same politicians who've been running the country, who've been running the North East, representing the North East. Look how many government ministers are from the North East. They've had a lot of time to sort it out. You know, there are lots of different solutions. I personally think that what Ray's doing in Middlesbrough is one solution, and I'd like that kind of solution adopted elsewhere in the North East. Maybe we can discuss that now, and we can persuade politicians of all parties to consider real alternatives. I mean, the, the party you support, the Conservatives, your leader has openly said he doesn't need votes in the North East to win an election. So uh, where is the alternative coming from? Well, I think you'll find now this, this result is equally important to the opposition parties who are developing policy in advance of an election. They have the advantage of having a clean sheet to start with. And, you know, we can write on a clean sheet with the opposition parties. The Labour Party and the government have to look at what they've got rip it up and start again. Ray Mallon, is the answer more of you? That's a matter for people like Graham to decide, but what I would say is this. This is an opportunity. What we have to do is unify the North East of England. I want to see the full sub-regions. But does it suggest that the North East is far from no, no. unified? Because it doesn't feel a sense of regional it's identity. Not, it's not been unified for years and years and years. We need a unified North East of England so that it punches its weight against the rest of the country. Now, what we have to do as politicians and members of the public is use people like you, the media, to get the message across to the millions of people out there that we need a unified North East. And I believe we can get one. And I'll say this, there's many other mechanisms to bring harmony. And I want to see harmony in the North East of England. And I intend to see that does, does this, I mean, Does this result, though, Graham, suggest that there is no such thing as the North East? Well, I, I think Ray and I do have a genuine dis difference of opinion on this. I believe that the North East is made of very diverse communities that have different aspirations and different heritage. And I don't believe it is automatically the right thing to draw an administrative curtain around the North East and, and bond it together in an right. artificial thing. Now, we have a difference of opinion there, and I'll respect Ray's view. But, but what, I, what, what I would say is that uh, if we look at uh, adopting new policies, the, the government and the politicians do have to raise their game. That's the most significant point to come out of this referendum today. Is there an irony here, Ray Mallon, in though that, uh, that there's quite a good turnout? Everyone's talking about a disastrous turnout, but the turnout's really strong and people have sent a message out saying, actually, we don't like politicians. Well, that's probably about right. But what I would say about this campaign is this. As far as the no campaign are concerned, they spoke about more cost, more politicians. That was appealing to the prejudice of the public. Mm. They did that very well. And it was very difficult for me and others like me to counter. What I, what Ray, would, you've got a voice. I, well, what I would say is this, I certainly have, but what I've got to say is this, that we've seen colour here. Mm. Suddenly we've had the public who've become engaged with politics. Yep. Let's forget for a moment the people that voted. There was many people who didn't vote who actually became re-engaged again. Now, I actually think this campaign, both yes and no, has actually been very successful because even the media 
have been more interested in politics than in years gone by. So with a bit of luck, we can actually build on what we've actually built over the last few weeks. I do agree with that. And I, I think that Ray and I, we've had our, our differences of opinion and a very combative debate as well. And that's a good thing. We haven't had a lot of debate about policy in the North. But what I would say, in the North East, the people have had to change the way they look at their own jobs. They've had to become more productive. They've had to work harder for the, the money that they earn. And they don't take lightly to politicians saying that they can't do their job right without more politicians. Yeah. Graham Rob, Ray Mallon, thank you very much. Well, it was a decisive no vote. But one thing that both sides appear to agree on is the North East has problems that need to be tackled. But clearly, the solution that people in the North East want is not a regional assembly. Back to the studio. And coverage of the referendum results continues on BBC News 24 now. But here on BBC One, it's back to our late feature film, Speak Like a Child. I'm Tony Curtis. You're going to be Sydney Watts' now. 